Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and here are some plus size romance recommendations. Baby, baby. So the books that I'm going to be talking about today are books where one of the characters or both of the characters are more curvier or considered plus size. I myself am not a plus size woman. I want to say I categorize more in the mid-size genre, so I cannot give accurate um, feelings about how well the representation is in here when it comes to plus size rep. As someone who is bigger than what people consider normal, <laughs> um, I have felt a lot of what these heroines specifically have been feeling. Um, but again, I am myself not considered plus size. Um, so again, I can't attest to how well the representation is done. So let's go dive into these 10 books. First, we have one of my favorite romances of all time, which is Hurts to Want You by Alicia Rye. This is the third book, a part of the uh, Forbidden Hearts series. I would say read these in order. Um, you get the most out of them if you do. This is the last book in the series. So all the other couples that are in the other books, like their story kind of gets like wrapped up as well in here. So our heroine in here, she is kind of like an heiress. Uh, her family owns uh, this giant company, earns a lot of money, but she has always had a huge crush on her brother's best friend. His name is Gabriel and he's big and tattooed and would not be considered a good match for our heroine because he is considered the help. He's not a part of a rich family and so she knows that uh, her father would not approve of them being together. These two people are then thrust together and forced to like confess their feelings for one another and can we kind of admit their feelings for one another when they are forced to work together to put on a wedding. I really love this book so much. Our heroine is the person in here that is more curvy and she talks about that a lot and like she's kind of insecure about it and our hero has to like tell her that he loves and adores her body, like loves it. And whew, that was so stinking attractive in here. That, whoo, that was, that was good. <laughs> Next, I have A Worthy Opponent by Katie Robert. Uh, this is a part of her Wicked Villain series, which are kind of like retellings of Disney or fairy tale stories where like the good guy, one of the good guys is actually with one of the bad guys from the tales. So this is a romance between Tinkerbell and Hook from Peter Pan. This is a marriage of convenience as well. Um, Tink has to marry Hook to get away from Peter who is trying to get her. And Peter in this story is a bad guy. And so you have seen like Tink and Hook pop up in the previous books and I love this one. I think this might be my favorite in the series. I love Tink so much and she fully embraces and loves her body. She flaunts it and knows that people are attracted to it and she doesn't give a crap what other people think about her. So you basically see like no insecurity whatsoever about like Tink not liking her body. She fully accepts the way that she looks and man was that so refreshing to read about. Um, I love characters like that because it has something that you can like look up to and be like I want to feel that way about my body. I want to feel that way about my body and so I kind of like strive to think the way that Tink does in this book and I don't know I, I really liked that. Next we have Penny's Protector by Ruby Dixon. This is book number 10 a part of the Ice Home series. If you didn't know this is an alien romance series. This is a spin-off to the Ice Planet Barbarian series uh, where human women have crash landed onto this uh, deserted ice planet filled with blue aliens. Um, and each person on the planet has to have a Kui or a symbiote put in their body that will like heal them, get them acclimated to the weather, um, and tell them where, where their lifelong mate and partner is. So if your mate or partner um, to have the best offspring with comes in close vicinity, your Kui will start to hum and indicate to you like, that's your person. That's who you're going to be with. And so this book is about Penny and she was kidnapped by one of the aliens on the planet. Um, and he takes her to this, um, cave. He wants to kidnap her so that like they can be together. <laughs> like he means well, they, he's not the brightest in the bunch. <laughs> he just thinks that if they're in an isolated area together, then their cooies will finally start to hum and tell them that they're supposed to be mates. He never forces himself on her or anything like that. He's just trying to tell her that he likes her and like he doesn't understand <laughs> that that might be bad. <laughs> Penny in here is a more curvy heroine. This is the only plus size heroine, um, a part of the Ice Home books that I can tell from the cover. And I think from what I have read, she is the only like fully plus size person on the camp, which um, is addressed in this book. Then we have Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. One of my favorite books of all time. It was my favorite book of last year. 
Oh my word, this is about Chloe, and she has a chronic illness called fibromyalgia. I also have a chronic illness, so that's why I love this book so much. I really connected to Chloe. Basically, this book starts out with Chloe almost getting hit by a car and dying. And she's like reflecting on her life and is like, I need to do more with my life. I have done nothing with my life. So she decides to move out of her parents' house and makes a list of a bunch of things that she wants to do to have a life. She then gets an apartment of her own and she meets the superintendent there whose name is Redford. And Redford and her do not get on uh, the best of terms at first. Uh, they don't really like one another at the beginning, but then uh, he finds out that she makes websites. That's her like business. She decides that she will make his website for him for his art business because he makes art if he helps her complete this get a life list. She has a bunch of things she wants to do on this list and she needs help completing it. Um, so throughout all of that, they start falling for one another. I honestly love all of Talia Hibbert's books that I've read so far in specifically in the Brown Sisters series. I believe every single sister in the series is plus size. Every single sister in the Brown Sisters series like fully embraces their body type and their body shape and really loves themselves. Danny specifically and take a hint Danny Brown, she flaunts her body. She loves it. Um, you get some talk about Eve and uh, actor A.G. Brown talking about how she loves her body and accepts her body but other people haven't. Um, she uh, is an amazing singer. She has been rejected time and time again by people in the music industry because of her body type, even though she is a fantastic singer. And she talks about that, how she hates having her worth decided based on what her body looks like and not the sound of her voice. And so that, I really loved that discussion in Actor A.G. Brown. So I feel like I should recommend all three here. So yeah, um, just read all these books. All of them are flip and amazing. We have another Talia Hibbert book called A Girl Like Her. This is actually a neighbor romance. Our heroine is kind of like a shut-in, a recluse. She doesn't really leave her apartment. And then one day she gets a new neighbor who is very friendly and bright and loves to cook for people. And so he goes over to her apartment one day, knocks on it, and she is quite grumpy and he is quite the sunshine. And so he just wants to cook her food. And she's like, what? <laughs> And so she is more on the curvy side. It's not really talked about all that much. She doesn't give a crap what other people think about her. She also is on the autism spectrum. What's her name? I forget. Ruth. Ruth is her name. Uh, she is on the autism spectrum as well. And so that plays a part into the book. And I really love the discussion about that. And so yeah, she just doesn't give a crap what other people think about her. And she accepts the way she looks. Then we have His Human Nanny by Michelle Mills. This is another alien romance. This is also a nanny romance, a single parent romance. Our heroine, as you can see by the cover, I love this cover, super cute. I think the, all, all the other books in this series have uh, curvy heroines as well. I do not recommend book two. Book two, I DNF'd, I did not like. <laughs> um, just because our uh, hero like does stuff to the heroine in book two while she's asleep and she does not know and she didn't consent to it, it just like, no. Um, so, but book one, book one is good. Book one is good. So um, our heroine, uh, she is asked to be a nanny for this guy, this alien, and he basically looks like the devil, like the devil's characteristics, red tail, horns. When she first sees him, when he comes to like pick her up from the train station um, on his planet, like she like faints because she thinks she's looking at the devil. Um, but then she like gets over it. She knows that that's not the devil, it's just an alien. And um, she ends up taking care of his two twin babies that were left on his doorstep. Man, does this alien in here find this woman so attractive and he loves every inch of her. He loves her curves so much. Like, whew. Oh, the attraction this alien has to this woman is it is who is hot it is hot i love when you get to see a hero and read about a hero that loves the curves in a woman like that is one of the most attractive things that you can read about in a book and whew, did this book deliver <laughs> we then have a lesson in thorns by sierra simone this is actually a romance where there are six people coming together three women and three men are all kind of coming together and they all have their own little things as well but there's many scenes with them all together <laughs> um but basically all six all six uh characters in here their parents all uh were friends and they went to this estate uh when they were kids and um it's years later they all have come back to this estate and there's like something creepy magical mystical going on and they all six end up like <laughs> getting together. <laughs> um, one of the heroines in here, she is plus size and she's actually also a social media influencer and I believe like a fashion like 
model as well. I love the chalk in here about this heroine specifically um, because there are so many people a part of this group that are so attracted to her. So amazing. She is so confident in herself. And ooh, was that just amazing to read about. We then have Muffin Top by Avery Flynn. Uh, this is the second book, a part of the Hardigans series. You don't need to read them in order. I read this one by itself and then I went back to read book one and book three. This one is about a heroine who needs a, I believe, fake date at a wedding. And so uh, her best friend's brother hears about this and um, asks her if they want to like fake date at this wedding. And he like, at first is not attracted to the heroine like at all. He just thinks of her as his sister's friend and um, she thinks that he could never like her because of her size. This book has more talk about her being it's very insecure about her body and thinking that she's not gonna have men or get men um, to notice her or legitimately have feelings of her because of her body type. Um, and he slowly throughout the book like starts falling for this woman and like slowly starts to realize how amazing this woman is. He like tells her like, hey, I love you for you, not because of the way you look. And you can see her struggling throughout the book, like struggling about how, of course, this man would never have feelings for me because of the way that I look. And he's trying to tell her like, no sis, no. <laughs> then we have Grafted Vines by uh, Kimmy Flores. This is the last book, a part of the Intertwined Heart series. This series is all about uh, a friend group, four friends, um, and they end up having their own relationships here and there. I honestly don't remember all that much about this book. I read this book like four or five years ago. She considers herself the bigger girl, a part of her group, uh, cause all the rest of the girls in her friend group are skinnier than her. But she is also the last woman, a part of this friend group, who does not have a kid, who is not married. You see those other stories in the previous books. This is her relationship with her closest friend, Zachary. They have a one night stand and uh, he decides to uh, basically shut her out afterward until something very dramatic happens to where he comes to her for help. Then their relationship starts changing and forming. I do remember specifically in this book, something, the only scene that I can remember about this book that I thought was hilarious. <laughs> Um, there's this scene. I think it's their scene where they have like their one night stand at the beginning. She is trying to like get dressed uh, <laughs> to like go back home afterward. And like, he's still in the room. The night before she like, I think like took off her spandex uh, while he was in the bathroom. So he did not know <laughs> that she wore spandex with like her dress to like suck everything in. I wear spandex when you gotta, you gotta suck things in when you wear a dress, you know? And it is hilarious. She's trying to like find her spandex under the bed. <laughs> so he doesn't notice that she's wearing spandex. I loved that. That was hilarious. Um, I, could, I I found that to be so relatable. I thought that scene was hilarious. And that's the only scene that I remember about this book. <laughs> and lastly, we have Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. And now in this book, both the hero and the heroine are plus size. This book is about Zenny and Mason, and they don't know each other at the beginning of this book, but Zenny's grandmother and no aunt, aunt ends up passing away. Her aunt was quite a big music superstar and she didn't really have kids of her own. So she ends up giving like basically all of the inheritance to Zenny, except for also giving some to Mason, who was her friend in her small town, younger friend, companion basically, uh, that lived in the same small town as her. There is like a, a parameter in her will that tells them that they have to get married to be able to claim their inheritance. So this is a marriage of convenience so both of them can get the money, all the money that this woman has left for them. Both characters on top of being plus size are um, an interracial couple and they are both bisexual, I'm pretty sure. And that is talked about a lot. All of those things are talked about, addressed and talked about very naturally and flows very naturally. And I really liked that a part of this book. But yeah, they end up having to get married to claim this inheritance and then they end up actually falling for one another. Really cute, really sweet. I just, I love this book so much. Uh, I really also actually love Rafe, the first book more in the series, um, but that's neither here nor there. We'll talk about the book another day. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are 10 books that have a plus size representation in it. Again, I am not plus size myself, but I did relate to a lot of what the characters were talking about in these books. If you personally, uh, don't like the representation in these books, please leave them down below. I'd love to know your opinions. Again, let me know if you've read these books um, or if you want to. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.